Again, my name is Michael Pasquino, originally from New Jersey. Been here 17 years. Right down the street, I have a electric, local electrical contracting uh, service and repair business. We have 15 staff, 10 full-time electricians, and Lynette just asked me to take a few minutes to um, go over some electrical safety. It's going to be my goal is to give you guys the viewpoint that it uh, you know, doesn't take too long to have safe practices. So are we set up on the PowerPoint? Yes. In Article 90, Introduction to the NEC, the National Electrical Code has one purpose only, and that is practical safeguarding of persons and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Okay, so this is pretty broad. It has to do with anything from your home electric to plant electric, right? It's not a secret. Electricity can be dangerous when things go wrong, lives can be at stake. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 289 employees were killed by contact with electric current in 2002. This equates to more than one work-related death every workday in America. So, also goes on to say that an average of 4,309 employees lost time away from work because of electrical injuries. Even if an injured employee doesn't die as a result of their exposure to electricity, the recuperation period can be long, painful, and expensive. The goal of this training module is to keep employees health and maintain a quality of life that we all deserve. How much electricity is dangerous? Can you guys see? Am I in your way? And if, if you know, this is an open format. It's a small group. If you guys have any questions or want to comment or anything, I'd like feedback occasionally. Let me know. Um, with that in mind, has anyone here seen someone or you yourself been injured by electrical? Have you been shocked? Yes. 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 Got it. Anybody ever fall off a ladder or see someone fall off a ladder getting hit with electric? No. I, grab, I grabbed the yoke of the TV one time by mistake and it hit me up pretty good. All right. I had the power cord wrapped around my leg in case something happened and I smashed it out of the wall. Good. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun when something does happen or you see something happen, and it's basically a wake-up call. So how much current can the body handle? Even at levels as low as 3 milliampers can cause injuries of an indirect or secondary nature in which involuntary muscular reaction from a, the electric shock can cause bruises, bone fractures, and even death resulting from collisions or falls, i.e. fall from a ladder after receiving a small shock. At 0.5 to 3 milliamps, tingling sensations. 3 to 10, muscle contractions, painful. 10 to 40 milliamps, the can't let go phenomena. Uh, 30 to 75, respiratory paralysis, possibly fatal. 100 to 200, now get the, get the idea here, we're talking about milliamps. We're not talking about 1, 5, 15 amp circuit even in your house. We're talking about milliamps actually going through the body. It's a very small amount of, of uh, current flow. 100 to 200, ventricular fibular, uh, fibrillation, likely fatal. 200 to 500, heart clamps tight. And 1.5 amps, tissue and organs begin to burn. Is that barbecue, Mike? Not the kind you want. <laughs> Electrical safety starts with having the correct viewpoint. Definition of viewpoint, a way of thinking about a subject. Speaking of viewpoint, what's yours regarding electrical safety? What do you really think about electrical safety and the practices associated with it? And your actions speak for themselves. Has anyone seen someone training them of how to do something that didn't do it safely? I'll just do it this way, or this is how I do it. You can just get in and out quick without shutting that off. All right, it's not the right way to do it. An unsafe viewpoint, having the wrong viewpoint, closes the door to safe practices across the board. An unsafe viewpoint, some things people might think or say, slows me down, takes longer to do the job. I can't waste the time on that. I can't shut down power. Now, there are certain instances where power is not shut off. It's in OSHA, and there are cases where it is. But under typical circumstances, when power can be shut off, it's required to be shut off in order to work on the, the circuit. Uh, I can be safe doing it my way. The company wants me to do it this way, or you just don't agree with the safe practices. 
a correct safety viewpoint, you, your face, hair, arms, hands, fingers, legs, your life, your health and long-term well-being are more important than any time or money saved to complete a job or task unsafely. Would you all agree? Yeah, I, I believe in a, a, a stable datum for me is if you're prepared for something, it doesn't happen. Whether it's electrical safety or life, it's kind of funny that it just works that way. When you take the precautions and you, you do things safely, it just doesn't happen. That one time when you just don't have the time or it's, it's 4 o'clock and you want to go home and you're just going to get this done quick, that's the time when you have an incident, you're not prepared for it, and it's that one incident that you know, is, is, not, is not acceptable. You know, one of the things that uh, I remember when, when I was taking my master's class, we got, the, we got a, a good viewpoint that you know, it's not just you getting hurt. I mean, let's just look at the plant. Obviously, you know, managers want to save time. Everybody wants to save money where they can. And if you can work faster or get something done faster, it's great. But think about if you, if you were to get hurt or someone gets hurt, right? You have the downtime for you, however long it takes you to recuperate. And then that day that that incident happens, do you think everybody else is getting much done, you know, for, for the, the hour or two that the ambulance comes? pick you up, everybody's talking about, it, everybody's frazzled, not much is getting accomplished. So literally you can look at, you know, a, a 10 minute, 20 minute, even an hour trying to save time turning into 30, 50, 100 hours of lost production in the end, not to mention an, an OSHA investigation that results in a large fine that can cost the company even more. So it's just not uh, acceptable to, to do that in the viewpoint is to handle it. So let's see here. So the long, you take a long-term approach to your career and safe practices. You know it only takes one event, personal injury, to affect the rest of your life. So the idea is that you, know, you may be in this career, you may be doing this work over the course of 20, 30, 40 years, right? It's a long time. If you practice safe practices all the time, the entire time, you know, you're going to minimize your risk to have a, an accident or something occur. I believe that's it. And then just wanted to mention lockout, tag out as the, you know, the, the minimum that you guys should always be doing. We mentioned it already a little bit. Because the de-energized circuit can easily be energized while an employee is working on it, the circuits energizing the parts shall be locked out or tagged out, or both. Electrical equipment that have been de-energized but have not been locked out or tagged shall be tr treated as energized parts. And it's a real good idea the employer must develop and maintain a written copy of the lockout tagout procedures and make it available to employees. Just wanted to leave the last five minutes for any questions you guys have. I just had a brief amount of time to just go over that, and I hope that viewpoint helps save somebody. You know, if uh, one of the things I, I would like to definitely also let you know is, you know, it, it takes being a little bit. Uh, having the willingness to speak up. If you see someone else doing something unsafe, let them know it's not okay. You need to shut that off. I'm not okay with you working that way, even if it's not you or your safety necessarily, but the, you know, everybody has to adopt the same viewpoint and the, and, and the belief, right? Also, management companies, if they're not buying lockouts or tagouts or they don't have the correct parts, it's just unacceptable. You, you know it's not going to save them money in the end. Ensure that they have the, the viewpoint and they purchase what they need in order to you know, enable you to be safe and do your job. It affects you regardless. If anyone gets hurt in your plant, it's going to affect you, right? It's going to affect, even if it just affects their, their pocket, you know it always comes back to you in some way. So don't think it has nothing to do with you or, hey, it's that guy's, you know, and, and people can get, can get mad or nasty. Oh, I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, leave me alone you know, or, or you're a lot younger than them or whatever, but hey, you know what, this is, this is the, the way it needs to be. And uh, if you care enough, you make sure that they'll do it safe too. That's really what it comes down to. So, thank you for having me.